And uh, so, hello again. Uh, I'm Zlatko Enef, a Bulgarian writer living and working in uh, Germany. In this part of my channel called uh, Zlatko Enef's Little Shop of Stories, that's the name of the channel, I'll uh, read you in continuations uh, my fantastic trilogy for children called uh, Fire Curl. That's uh, the nickname of a girl. Uh, in order to understand what it is about, you'll have to show uh, to watch at least uh, a few of the videos. They are all pu uh, published in uh, one playlist called Fire Curl in the Ghost Forest, which happens to also be the name of the first book. I just read the first half of the introduction in the previous video. Um, I'll probably have to put links in the descriptions. I am still struggling, struggling with the organization of the material. Probably will uh, work it out in the course of the work. So far, it's rather coarse in the quality of the videos. For some reason, is not exactly what I um, expect. I record them at very high resolution. They come in a very small files. God knows what some technical glitch. Anyway, let's not. Put your patience under uh, any more tests. I continue with the stories. As you might remember, if you watched the first part, and it just and just got this uh, magic game from a man, strange man called Nerot Lapsev, an old man. Uh, the game is kind of alive, and uh, well, let's see what happens. Anne was furious. It was the second day the game had refused to work. Everything had been going fine and the first few days had simply flown by. She was so enchanted by the box that she would have forgotten to eat if it hadn't been for mom. She would only flop into her bed at night when she no longer had an ounce of energy in her. The magic game continually offered new surprises. At the beginning, Fire Curl had tried to catch some of the little creatures that populated the box. But after she had pricked herself, or maybe had been bitten and bled, she quickly gave up on that. Then she busied herself with exploring the landscape. There wasn't a great deal to see among the dense woodland, but she nevertheless managed to establish that animals were only to be found on the near side of the river. In general, the game's two halves divided by, uh, divided by the river looked quite different from each other. Uh, where there was meadowland on the one side, there was virtually impenetrable forest growing on the other. Each side differed in terms of color as well. This side glowed with cheerful reds, yellows, and browns, while the opposite was monotonous dark green broken up here and there by a few gray patches as if a disease were eating its way through the woods. Even the birds flying around were keeping well clear of that side of the river and couldn't find any explanation for that and to tell the truth she couldn't really be bothered uh, as she was quite happy exploring the near side, which was also full of lots of much more interesting stuff. The watermill's wheel was turning around and the water wheel's wheel was turning and clattering cheerfully. The tree house swayed gently in the breeze and Anne even came across a waterfall in the gorge between the mountains. Its tiny proportions made it look rather comically bad-tempered, but still it was incredibly beautiful and fascinating. The game had been a lot of fun until yesterday, when quite out of the blue it had stopped working. At first Anne refused to accept that the magic was over, and for a long time she was cross with mom, who had tried to calm her down. Then she looked the box over to see if something was damaged, but eventually had to give up. And this made her so furious, she was fit to burst. 
Are you going to work or do you want me to smash your face in? Stop it, Anne, shouted Mom from the next room. I've told you a hundred times, it probably needs new batteries. New batteries, my foot. That old man has given us some cheap junk, but I'll soon sort it out. She prodded at the river, which had turned into something resembling a kind of hard jelly. If only I could find how to get into the works. I am not going to put up with that tone of voice. Leave the game alone and find something else to do. You've been getting on my nerves all day. Yeah, yeah. If she hadn't been so tired, maybe mom would have noticed a dangerous tone in Anne's voice that would normally have warned her that some mischief was brewing. But either because she was too tired or simply because she was fed up, she preferred to end the conversation. And to show that she didn't want to be bothered anymore, she shut the door to her room. And he had been waiting just for that. Without losing any time, she rummaged through all her shelves and cupboards until she found a big hammer. She then made her way to the box, tight-lipped and frowning. Slowly, she lifted the hammer above her head, head, hesitating a few seconds as if expecting the game to show some sense at the last moment before spitting through clenched teeth. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Bang! The hefty hammer smashed down right in the center of the game somewhere between the mill and the fishing jetty. To Anne's great amazement, nothing happened, except the hammer bounced off as if made of rubber. She stood there for several moments, not believing her eyes. Then she realized that something really had happened. She bent down over the box in order to take a closer look. First, she noticed that the game was radiating a light blue-green glow as if a thin, transparent veil had been thrown over it. And then somewhere in the center, a little puff of smoke appeared that quickly started growing thicker. Anne was beginning to worry and thinking to run in, of running to mom, but to her even greater horror, she discovered she was unable to move. Panicking, she attempted to shout, but her mouth just refused to open. She struggled with all her strength to free herself from the grip of the invisible force that held her, but it was useless. Something like thick mud enveloped her and she couldn't blink an eyelid, let alone move a leg or speak. In the meantime, the smoke had expanded and was taking the form of a tall, upside-down cone. It was spinning round at rapid speed and was slowly getting nearer to Anne. Just a few days earlier, Firecurl had been watching a program about tropical storms and, to her horror, she now realized that it wasn't smoke but a small tornado. One of her arms was lifted up and drawn, drawn towards the neck of the cone. No, no, no! She tried to shout, but to no avail. Unwillingly, her arm stretched towards the tornado, which drew near and started slowly swallowing her. Her body got thinner and distorted like a cartoon character. The invisible force gradually lifted her up turned her upside down and stuffed her into the mouth of the tornado. Like a scoop of ice cream in a waffle, in a waffle cone, thought Anne. Then she lost her bearings completely and decided simply to let herself be carried away. For some reason, she no longer cared what happened to her. So, uh, thank you very much. This was the end of the introduction to volume first of the 
let's call it The Adventures of Fireco, a trilogy for children that I've written many years ago and that I would like to present to you, to you in my channel. Thank you very much for visiting. Do not hesitate to subscribe in order to get the notifications about the newest publications because this is, as in, this is an endeavor that will be going on for a pretty long time, I suppose. Stay healthy, be happy, and very, very successful till the end of your day, and why not till the end of your life? Thank you. Mm -hmm.